Um, but what I will be showing you are the practical examples of what I call the big five things that we need to do with mixes, and they are blending levels, using EQ, controlling dynamics, using effects, and mixing monitors. Once you know that these are the main things to do, and I'll show you how, then all you need to do is to find out how to access these functions through you know, your own mix or whatever you're using. So for example, using EQ on an analog board is as simple as just selecting the EQ knobs on that particular channel. On a digital board like this, you'll probably select a channel and then use a common set of EQ controls to tweak that particular selected uh, channel. Does that make sense? Between, we're basically doing the same thing, just a, a slightly different way. So just see that whether you're using a, a simple Mackie analog mixer or a digital Yamaha or even a Digico mixer, your job is to get to the controls that we'll be looking at and from then on, you know, we'll basically be doing everything the same. Really, give me any mixer and if I know the answer to these few questions, you know, how do I access EQ, dynamics, effects and monitor sends, then, you know, I'll, I'll be good to go. So again, don't be hung up on the fact that I might not be using your particular mixer. At the beginning of every topic, I'll point you how to find, you know, how to access that function on your particular mixer. And then, you know, we'll be basically on the same page. Make sense? Good. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and bring up a mix. Okay, I've labeled all of the channels across here and we can start to pull them up and we'll go ahead and start with the drum. So the first one here is the kick drum. So already, can you hear how there's some bleed from other instruments there? It's, I mean, it's mainly the kick drum, but you can hear the snare drum in the background. We'll be able to fix that later on when we deal with gates and some of the other um, dynamic processes. But right now, that's a kick drum. Let's bring up the snare drum, which is playing a side stick right now. A hi-hat. Maybe we want to pan that hi-hat out a little bit. So I'll select it. Now I wouldn't want to pan it all the way to the right like I might do in a recording because that'll penalize some of the people who are not sitting like at the 12 o'clock position, you know, in a live situation. Uh, so I tend to be a little bit more reserved with my panning in a live situation. So we'll bring up the toms. And same thing, maybe tom one there, tom two there, tom three there, tom four there. Overhead left. I'd, I'd do that all the way to the left and the right one all the way to the right. I would tend to be a little bit more aggressive with the panning of these guys. And here's the right. I'll put that over a little bit there. Okay, that, that's kind of a rough roots in my drums. In fact, you might even want to use the subgroups that we learned about before to manage the entire drum kit from just, you know, a couple of faders rather than all of these guys. You remember how on our analog mixer we had little assignment buttons here? For each channel we could then send each channel to a separate subgroup and then um, if you wanted to preserve any panning across the stereo spectrum, like in this example, this hi-hat, then you'd want to assign this to a stereo pair of subgroups. It's exactly the same thing here on this console. We select any channel and you can see that they are assigned to either the main bus or to these subgroups over here. Instead of those little buttons being down here, they're just over here. They're a common set of buttons for each selected uh, channel. So you can see each of these guys, they're all set to the main channel. We don't want to do that. We want to subgroup these guys over here to um, a, a subgroup. So let's select the first one here and deselect it from the main and then bring it over here to the sub one. So that'll work, you go through each one here and sub them down to the one, but as we learned before, if you wanna preserve your stereo panning, which we did, remember the hi-hat was out here, our overheads were panned out wide. If we wanna preserve those pannings, we really need to bring this over to a pair of subgroups. So the first one, I would set it to sub one and two and deselect from main. The second one, I would do the same. And if you're dexterous enough, you can actually uh, do this. Do that, boom, 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 boom. Okay, I think I did it right. I'm just checking them all. Uh oh, that one was. Okay, that looks like all of them there. 
So now all of these guys, one through 10, all of these channels are deselected from the main over here, but they are brought over here to the subgroups one and two. But guess what? If we select these guys, subs one and two, they're not assigned anywhere. We need to assign them to the main and this one to the main and also pan them out wide. So the first one here goes all the way to the left. Second subgroup goes all the way to the right. And if I've done everything right, they should come up right about here. Very cool. So now you can balance the entire drum kit just by using a couple of subgroups. A lot easier to ride your drums with just a couple of fingers rather than all of these guys and kind of messing up your relative mix between all the drums. So subgroups are, you know, just a great way to manage a whole bunch of channels over here. For example, I'd never have a bass guitar subgroup because there's no benefit, right? If I only have one bass guitar channel, assigning that to a subgroup is, you know, kind of pointless. So what would um, good candidates be for subgroups? Drums is a classic because you have a whole bunch of channels over here that you quite often just want to ride. Um, the whole drums as a whole, they're perfect for subgroups here. You know, change the entire drum mix over here or just the individual hi-hat over there. Backing vocals are another one. If you have, say, six backing vocalists over here, then sub them over and adjust all of them over here or just maybe bring up the tenors, if you like, over here if you need a little bit more bottom end on your backing vocal mix. Now, remember that you, if you have any stereo panning going on over here, you'll need to pair, sorry, sub over to a pair of subgroups here and then pan those guys out wide to hear your panning choices over here. If you sub to a pair of subgroups and then leave those subgroups just pan straight up the middle, then all your panning over here will just be in vain. Now, by the way, a close cousin to uh, subgroups of VCA groups where certain mixes have a fader that remotely control a bunch of other faders. So what I'd call a dumb subgroup is just an assignment of a bunch of faders onto another subgroup. That's just kind of like a routing thing, you know, just signal flow. But some mixes have VCA groups that remotely control faders. So in other words, moving a VCA group is just like moving these guys here, which can affect any post aux sends. It's not really a big deal, but it might be a good place for you to do some further research if your mixer has VCA groups or you know anything uh, similar. In fact, you know some mixers also have mute groups where you can assign a bunch of channels, so you can press just one button just to mute a bunch of them uh, over here. Okay, so uh, back to mixing. Okay, so we've brought all the drums up. They're coming up on a couple of different subgroups here. Let's bring up uh, the bass. So a lot of people have different uh, approaches to mixing. I tend to build from the bottom up, bring up the drums and the bass. Then we could bring up, uh, say, a piano here. Piano. Bring them out there, acoustic. There's a left and right. You get an idea. This is the way to get kind of just a basic mix up. We'll deal with uh, you know gating some of these things. Some of these things really need to be gated. Um, add compressors, EQ. But this is just kind of a good way to just to kind of get a basic mix up, kind of get an idea of what you're dealing with. I can't emphasize enough that there are you know many different schools of thought in terms of how to mix, but all agree who the star of your mix is, and that is the lead vocal. Absolutely. Go to any food court in the mall and listen 
to the background music, you may not hear all of the instruments over the lunch crowd, but you will hear the vocal absolutely for sure. Make sure that your lead vocal is heard and then place all the other instruments in an accompaniment kind of around that.